Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, hopefully this is going to be a banger video. We're going to be talking about a bunch of different stocks. Mostly we're going to be talking about a portfolio, showing you what we did with Marathon, uh, where, where I think it's going to go, and, and just talk about a bunch of different companies here. Uh, so if you're excited, whip this on two times speed and just listen along. So uh, first of all, very big day in the account. We're up about 13500 USD. Uh, we now have over 100000 Canadian market value in the account. This total buying power is going to change because it's up so much, it, it changes per day. Um, and let's just take a look into the position, then we'll go into the TFSA account. Uh, CleanSpark, they have earnings after hours today. Uh, they were only down a couple hundred bucks, 400 bucks. We're up 23.5 on, on Mara. We got that 14.72 average, up 21% massive. And what did I buy? I bought a put. So we're going to walk through why I'm swinging a single day expiry put into tomorrow. Uh, there's two things I was kind of looking at. So uh, that, um, as well as we go into the TFSA. We got CleanSpark up 7.3, Marathon up 6.3, MicroStrategies is up 1,500, and, and Upstart uh, down 500. So, so this was about a three times leverage, this was about a two times, and then these were one and one, uh, split out of uh, uh, the money that we put in. So CleanSpark obviously up the most, per performing the best for us. We're up 42%. Um, on Mara, we're up 27%, and on MicroStrategies, we're up 21%. So uh, CleanSpark by far outperforming forming from where we bought it uh, but all of these I love the dip buys I love every single one of these and, and this is just getting started so um, that's enough for the account let's walk through the charts talk to what I'm thinking about um, and in terms of the S&P 500 look at the weekly it's breaking out 500 whole number can we get there right um, I do think we can however I want to emphasize the chip stocks $115, it's up 50% today. Look at this move off earnings. Absolutely ridiculous, right? Um, this is only a $100 billion company. They're doing about $900 million in revenue is what they're projecting for next quarter. So um, in the sector that they're in, are they overvalued? I'd say this is one of the lesser overvalued chip stocks even after this 50% move out of all of them. But what I'm really looking at is, look at these chip stocks, look at SMCI, pushed up it, it's wanting to top but this is the trade we took we took nvidia short we took some put options on nvidia we're four bucks out of the money that's nothing that's not even one percent will get us in the money in profit um i want to take a look at the time frame that i was looking at which is the 10 minute and, and what the one of the big things is is the 10 moving average and the 20 moving average and, and what this signifies is the short term trend is changing from the slightly longer term trend and to identify these things uh, can help us as traders be very pros profitable so as we can see the last time it kind of converged down um, Nvidia it is it sold off right it, we saw it converge down sell off then when it went to make its next bull run move towards 700 we see it touch off of the 10 moving average the 10 moving average comes above the 20 and stays above it all the way until right about here which is where I where I bought in the put option we're down just because of theta it hasn't gone down enough but I'm willing to swing this into tomorrow we can see the bounce off of the support line right here at 697 uh, the momentum coming down and if we change this um, into a Hekiyasaki candle uh, 10 minute looks good it looks like it's ready to break off of the support line um, I want to move out to the 30 minute I like this as well it's hovering right around the 20 moving average support so a lot of buyers up around 700 but if we get those out of the way we can definitely see room to drop maybe even to the 680 range I do see a pullback the markets very overextended uh, Friday uh, if you look at the weekly we change this back to the hollow candle uh, we put this to the weekly this stock is just in absolute parabolic mode we saw the breakup it's support off the uptrend but when we go to the daily this is a topping tail. This is the type of candle that I'm not saying that uh, this is the top of Nvidia, and I don't think it is. Uh, but this is definitely a candle that that tomorrow, if we're any what bearish, we sell. Right? It's just a bearish sell on the daily into this candle, um, and you, you try and sell down to support at about 680. So uh, I'm looking for maybe even 1500, 300 percent from this Nvidia option. It's super overextended, due for a down day, uh, and taking a couple hundred dollars risk. Uh, 
Uh, it, it seems better than to take a firm. And, and we'll just walk through a firm because I am short. Uh, I'm very short a firm. I don't have any position. But if I had to take a position, it would be short. Now, obviously, the downtrend, confirmation of the uptrend, confirmation downtrend. Now, it looks like it's splitting back up. But earnings is a gamble. Earnings can be anything. Um, the way stocks have been playing, this definitely looks like the type of momentum stock to possibly get back up into 70 so i wouldn't be shorting shares here i'd be playing put options and i and i was looking at them and, and to add an extra week of time on the put options is only like an extra 50 bucks or something right so there's a huge implied volatility uh just remember tomorrow's the last trading day so if you don't get that initial move you don't have extra days to play off it so i recommend getting an extra week if if you were to play some affirm uh i would like i said i would be playing it short i think it's a really overvalued company um i, I don't think they're profitable but look roblox went up and, and they weren't profitable and snap absolutely tanked so uh some other stocks that i do want to talk about because they did have earnings we've talked about them before snapchat um in terms of is Snapchat a dip buy? Now this was a beautiful bull breakout or, or bear breakout back down and just they slumped on earnings. But they're back to this $18 billion company. They're at 30, uh, uh, whatever percent move, what did they drop? They dropped 30%, 35%. It is a really, really big move. They, they just came back down below this 200 moving average. In a bull market, I would say this 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 is a nice dip buy, but you gotta wait until momentum starts to pick back up on this stock and you look for maybe their next earnings. Uh, definitely you don't wanna buy a falling knife in, in a bull market because you're just miss, you're wasting money on, on where you could be allocating it better. And I think that's what everyone else is thinking about the same thing too with, with Snap and PayPal and Tesla is they're just taking money out of it and they're putting it in where the growth is, where, where the growth is. And why growth is so important, I, I wanna talk to you about it is compound money, right? And, and so, if you have a carger and you factor in that you're going to grow, let's say 10% a year, and then you raise that growth to now you think you're going to grow 15%, well, instead of 10 times 10 times 10 times 10, you're 15 times 15 times 15 times 15 uh, in terms of your, your percentage growth gains and how much you can factor in this stock. And that's why we can get these exaggerated moves when we forecast good growth or we don't forecast any growth. And that's why you see these massive moves on the stock market because around earnings, because Earnings are, are what the money is meant to be forecasting, right? The money is meant to be forecasting a company's earnings years into the future. And if you're all of a sudden forecasting that you're going to have more forecasted money, well, well, that can move a stock in terms of 10, 20% in a day and maybe maybe even 50 to 100% over like a, a quarter, right? So that's like the thought process. That's the thesis on all of that there. And... A couple other stocks I want to bring up. PayPal had earnings, beat really nice earnings in terms of uh, their their just revenue, their their earnings per share, buybacks, but no guidance. And I've I've charted out this weekly channel. It's like this. It's the same thing as one of the first videos I did of this like Sauron's tower. It's this streaming downtrend. Lots of sell pressure. The market is not wanting to, to buy this stock and factor money and there is a lot of down until we get to these bottom support lines once again paypal i mean i'm really disappointed in the ceo in terms of he hyped it up he, he there was a buy the rumor sell the news in terms of what he was hyping up like who cares you're, you're posting some ai thing i think that's just really bad management um and and hurts investors and people don't want to see that right i uh, i really think what they need to do is, is make a big move into the crypto space but until we see this breakout of these trend lines and when that is, I'd be a buy. I think it's a very undervalued company. I think they can forecast growth in the future, but but they just aren't yet. And like I said, you don't wanna be putting your money in a bull market into something that's cycling down. And lastly, the other stock that's cycling down that like, these are stocks that I would eventually like to, to, to buy and own long term is Tesla, right? Um, in terms of they're in this downtrend. They're not forecasting more growth. They're, they're lowering their growth estimates. So their stock, because these stocks can get so overvalued, they due to their growth estimates, they have lots of room to fall. So I, I'd really be looking to, to pick up some uh, Tesla shares. I'm hoping at maybe 160 or something. Uh, anything under 200, I like, but it doesn't. It's not giving me a. a screaming buy now uh, in terms of these companies and, and whereas Bitcoin and Mara uh, what we're gonna look at here definitely is so weekly looks to be breaking out it's over the the, the difficult support lines we're, we're, we're opening it up into 
we can run here we look at the daily the macd is converging we have room to run towards these all-time highs and push into somewhere where there hasn't been much volume uh which means that the sellers are out of the way for this level and we got to wait till the next level of sellers comes in right uh look at the four hour which is uh usually my favorite one for bitcoin uh just because it's traded 24 hours it kind of resembles the one hour um very bullish once again breaking up uh topping tails up here but it, it's it's making this movement and we bring this to the the hakiyasaki very nice consolidation breakout momentum can we get to these key points because when, when we get to these key points buyers traders will step in and the only way this is going to get held down is is value investors and in something like bitcoin is once you get the sellers out of the way everyone who who has money to buy well uh well then um it, it, it's simply going in one direction once you consolidate for a while, right? So let's take a look at these miners. Let's take a look at Marathon Digital. Look at their chart. Um, one hourly looks great. Got above the got above the uh, two hundred moving average. We look at the daily. The daily is also nice as well. I'm taking this off Hakiyasaki. We see the breakout. The 10 is going above the 20 day moving average. The short term trend is now outdoing the longer term trend. So it signifies a trend change. And you see this short squeeze. We're now back up above this key level of 20, uh, 20 to 2040. Um, and what we next, the next key level we are looking at is about 23 bucks a share, which is another eight, 10% move. We could see that into Friday. If Bitcoin really gets going, this thing and, and the best thing about this is there's no gaps all the gaps that were created throughout here have now been filled they've consolidated people have had a chance to get in at this these prices and look at this the first green candle of the shift back up and, and these shifts can be long look at how long this this downtrend lasted and look at how long this uptrend of momentum lasted this and doesn't it, it doesn't seem to change ever so often here was kind of flatlining uh very stagnant but these big bull runs and these big bear runs come in uh come in bunches so th if there is a, a thing that is signifying this is your buy now this is your breakout point even though bear fund digital is up 21 percent today this is it i've been looking at the blocks they've been mining a lot more blocks recently uh whereas that was what they were slacking in january uh, they got unlucky with their blocks a lot of their miners came offline and transaction fees were down because bitcoin was down bitcoin's pumping their miners are fully operational and online as well as they seem to be getting more of the luck factor um in terms of mining blocks so uh marathon digital looks very exciting uh bitcoin even just take a look at the five minute here uh it is really trying to break out it has a lot of momentum the one hour looks very nice it's above the 10 everything is signifying a buy uh going into the weekend and that is the same reason because nvidia has has came up so 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 much is why on the shorter term time frame, just on the single day, because I'm trading one day expiries, this is signifying to me uh, a change in the trend towards more of a short term bear trend on Nvidia, take profit by the end of the week. I don't think this thing can hold above 700. And if it's not holding above 700, it's got a lot of room to kind of people sell into profit up here. So that's what I'm thinking uh, going into this week. Uh, like I said, a firm, I'd be hella short. Uh, Pinterest, I don't really know on. That's another big earnings. CleanSpark's going to be exciting to see their earnings. Uh, we can look at them as well. Um, but CleanSpark, MicroStrategies, um, Mara, they all have very, very similar charts in terms of their, their breakout formation. CleanSpark looks very nice. Like I said, 10 moving average, getting above the 20. The MACD is starting to curl up, even on the weekly bouncing off of the support line getting back above the 200 ema or the 200 moving average now back above the 10 moving average uh it looks very very strong these miners look very very strong and that's why when the momentum comes it can hit fast and you're like oh, i can't buy on a 10 percent up day and it goes up 10 percent 10 percent 10 percent 10 percent every day and then once it starts coming down you buy the dip and it just sinks and pulls you out and you hate this stock emotionally right and that's why you got to be looking for these trends you, you can't be looking for getting your perfect price because at the end of the day in this market you're not looking to buy at a specific price you're looking to make money and a lot of these miners look like they're ready to really really run again past their their highs um as well as bitcoin looks like it, it could definitely get back above uh hopefully 
try and test 50,000. And if it does, uh, these miners are, could be up at 38 bucks, 40 bucks in terms of marathon. Clean Spark could be at 17, 18. Uh, and that really starts, the, uh, when that happens, the, this account right here, uh, this is the TFSA, but this this margin account, this we got 3,600 marathon digital shares. That's at, that two X's from here is 70% up. That number gets a whole lot nicer. We can start selling call options uh, and looking to take profit. So like I said, 2370 seems to be the next resistance. I have no interest in selling single day expiry options. It's just a gamble. It's it's not money I need. Um, however, Monday, if it gaps up over the weekend and Bitcoin looks strong and Marathon's moving, uh, I might look to start edging out calls. Maybe I sell three calls and if it keeps going up, I sell three more. And if it keeps going up, I sell three more and start trying to make money and go back to these 300 clean spark shares were, were created through option selling and and bought a little bit on leverage but primarily that's what i look to do is i got to get rid of some of these marathon digitals when these go up because i don't want to be over leveraged i'm hoping to only have to sell 600 of these and hopefully sell them through options uh because this this is only getting charged seven percent a year uh, and and that's twenty nine thousand dollars. That's perfectly fine. So, anyways, guys, that's about it for the video. Uh, huge day for the Bitcoin miners. Um, if you have any other stocks that you want me to cover, uh, I, I just shoot them out. Uh, I know Fubo was down a lot uh, recently on on some bad news. Uh, like I said, I, you you got to go with the trend of the stocks. If the stock is trending down off news, maybe you're a value investor and you want to dip by it, and it's in a TFSA, and you do that, and that's fine. But you want to be trading the momentum and that's why so many people got into this AI hype train. Uh, but I, I really think this has brought the market up a lot. The market is due for somewhat of a pullback and, and that's why I'm taking a gamble on these single day expiry options. They're basically, it's basically even swing it overnight, but this thing gaps down 3%. Well, well, boom, I'm up uh, 20 to $2,000. So anyways, guys, have a good one and I'll catch you later.